Hello, this is Reggie York. This is a presentation on descriptive analysis of data. At the end of this presentation, you will be able to define what is meant by descriptive research and descriptive analysis of data. Descriptive research is one of several types of research. This presentation will focus on it. You should be able to explain how descriptive research is helpful in the examination of data for purposes other than description, such as, for example, when you're doing an explanatory study or an evaluative study, and you need to examine the data descriptively to see if there are any problem areas to consider in your examination of your data for the other types of studies. You'll be able to de demonstrate the descriptive analysis of data using an example of a printout of data using SPSS, which will be another presentation, but we'll just show you just basically how that gets started. There are several types of research when you classify research by purpose. Descriptive research simply describes variables in your study. That's the for focus of this particular presentation. Three other types of research include explanatory research, which helps you to explain variables by examining their relationships. With descriptive research, you're not examining relationships. You're just examining variables one at a time. The third type there is exploratory research, which adds to our limited knowledge. Then we have evaluative research, which helps us to evaluate an intervention service or program. This presentation is primarily geared, by the way, to the human services and human service professionals. Two of the key questions for the analysis of data. How many variables are in the analysis is one question. Another, at what level is each variable measured? There are other questions that guide analysis of data. These are the two that we'll talk about in this particular presentation. Let's look at uh, descriptive analysis in regard to the number of variables. In descriptive analysis of data, the number of variables is always one. You want to know what is the distribution of persons by age, or height, or political party affiliation, or gender. In each case, you're looking at them one by one, so the number of variables is just one. Even if you're looking at five different variables, you're doing them one at a time if you're doing descriptive analysis. It's different if you're looking at the relationship between two or more variables. That would put you in the category of explanatory research, which is not in this presentation. Let's look at net levels of measurement, which you may have become familiar with. I'll quickly review it. Nominal is when you put people into categories that are not ordered, like gender political party affiliation, and things like that. The second is ordinal, when you put people into ordered categories, such as strongly agree, agree, disagree, strongly disagree. Those are categories, but they are ordered from low to high. Interval is when you, have, when you give someone a score or measure something like age in years or height in inches or feet. Or as I said, the score, say the score on a depression scale. Ratio is a level that has a fixed zero point. I won't say anything more about it because it's not terribly relevant to descriptive analysis for what I'm going to be doing. Descript descriptive statistics. That was easy for me to say. Descriptive statistics. <laughs> descriptive statistics for nominal variables include frequency. For example, we have 24 females and 18 males in this hypothetical study I just threw at you right here. Proportion. 57% of the sample are female, 43% male. For ordinal variables, you can, in addition to frequency and proportion, you can compute the median and the range for a variable measured at the ordinal level. Uh, the median is the midpoint. The range is 
the the minimum possible the minimum score you received uh, uh, and the highest. The median is the midpoint uh, in all the units of data. Let's just look at an example. I've laid out age each person's age. We have eight different people, nine different people, excuse me. So we have 23, 25, 26, and the person 26, 30, 31, 32, 36, 37, and another person 37. This, we're laying out all the people in our sample by age in order. The middle one is 31. That's the median. The range of the above is 23 to 36. 23 to 36, or 14 is the the actual unit difference. Descriptive statistics for interval variables. In addition to those things you can compute for those other variables we have discussed, for interval variables you can also compute uh, the, uh, the mean and the standard deviation. The mean is the, the average. Most people should be familiar with how that is computed. The standard deviation is the average amount that each person deviates from the mean adjusted for considerations of the normal distribution. There's a formula for that, but it basically tells you something about variance. How different were people in your sample as compared to how similar they are. When you present descriptive statistics for nominal variables, you could use the pie chart or the bar chart, among other things. Here's an example of a pie chart. We have here one, two, three, four different categories. Let's say this is a political party affiliation. And for some reason, this particular illustration that I grabbed for you wants to highlight one of the slices of the pie. This may be Democrat, Republican, um, other, uh, independent and uh, libertarian, or other. This may be other or something. Well, this would show how they are, how the uh, how the the pie, so to speak, is distributed among those persons. Generally speaking, a pie chart is good if you have three to six categories in your nominal variable. If you have thirty categories in your nominal variable, the pie chart will look strange and be a little difficult to follow. The bar chart, if you'll just ignore this little arrow, I don't, uh, I'm not going to discuss it, but here are the bars showing the, let's say it's political party affiliation, this, say the first one there on your left is, say, Republicans, the next one Democrats, the next one uh, Independents, and the next one, let's say that's uh, other. And uh, you may want to, if this were the case, you may want to put it into a bar chart and highlight the fact there are more independents than there are Democrats. There are also more Republicans than Democrats, but also more independents than Democrats. This may be interesting to show the distribution of people by political party affiliation. When you present data for ordinal variables, you can, uh, in addition to the bar chart, you can use a histogram, which in an essence is a bar chart with no space between the bars. That's just a convention used to illustrate the fact that the the uh, information is ordinal instead of nominal. If you describe interval variables, normally you simply present the results of interval variables in regard to things like mean, range, standard deviation, and so forth in the narrative of your report. You simply say the mean age of these persons were was uh, 27.6 and the standard, standard deviation was 7.5, as opposed to putting it, presenting it graphically. There are ways to present it graphically, but I'm not going to discuss those. But here is a, an example. The ages of these clients ranged from a low of 21 to a high of 48, with a mean of 32.3 and a standard deviation of 5.4. Let's talk about statistical significance. Statistical significance, there's that word again. Normally, you are not concerned with statistical significance if you're simply describing your sample and not comparing it to a known population. If all you want to do is describe your sample of persons, 
by age and political party affiliation, you have no particular reason to entertain the concept of statistical significance. If you're comparing it to a known population, that's different. Measurement. You must have a data file for the analysis of your data. That data file comes from a survey or something of that nature. So this means you have variables of interest that have been measured for a group of people and you have that data to examine. You have the means of statistical analysis. An example would be SPSS. There are lots of other examples. But this is a software package, one of many, that can be used to compute statistics, statistics for you, like the mean, the mode, and so forth. Um, let me just give you a quick example here. Three groups of students at a university located in the South we're given a survey that measured a number of variables, such as, for example, are you over the age of 30, yes or no? Did you spend the majority of your childhood years living in the South, yes or no? This is something I've just recently used. So you notice that we did not measure age in years in this particular example. Typically, you would measure age by saying, what is your age, blank years. That's different. We're using it here simply as yes or no. We've convert, converted it to sort of a uh, basically a nominal variable because it, it only has two categories. Same is true for living in the South. Yes or no, that's nominal. Uh, this is this illustration very quickly that the way you uh, the way it would end up in the uh, computer for you. This is person number one was coded as zero for age, and was coded as one for being in the South. Zero for age means that they were. Uh, not 30 or above. Uh, growing up in the South means they did. They did. So the first person grew up in the South, the second person grew up in the South, the, the third person did not. These are codes used to, re to represent diff the different categories of the answers that were given. This is the kind of thing you do for the analysis of your data statistically using a software package. Okay, that just quickly summarizes something about descriptive analysis of data. Descriptive analysis of data emerges from a study where variables are measured. The suggested descriptive statistics vary by level of measurement. And the same is true for the reporting of these data. When you describe, you have only one variable in the analysis. And I hope this is helpful to you.